Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today I am back to do another book review. This time I am back for Perils of Sea and Sky by Lillian Horn. This was a book I received from the publisher in order to do a review. My thoughts and opinions are my own. I heard about this book through a Discord group that, that I am in that focuses on science fiction. One of the members works at a small press and was asking if anybody would be interested in reading this and I said yes. You know, me. Book! I like books over here! And so I actually read this a while ago in the summer but I wanted to do a review now because it comes out now in September. Here is my official review. And I am going to keep this spoiler free since this is a debut. And from what I understand, this is a first in a series. This is a science fiction fantasy. It's that technology and magical blend that makes it so. So this book is primarily a dual POV story. At least it focuses on two characters but you do get other points of view of other members of the crew. And those main two perspectives are Nelson Blackwood, who is an attorney who is wanting to find his father's lost ship. His father was in the Navy. And then the other main perspective is Captain Roseanne Drakenhart, and she is a captain of one of, or she is a captain of a privateer do some smuggling but they also do some legitimate work as well in this society we have airships and the airships are powered due to rocks that have anti rocks with anti -gra gravity matter so the there is a scientific element in the world that allows these floating ships to happen in a way it also kind of feels steampunkish even though Steam is not the medium through which a lot of the technology happens, at least not from what I remember. Captain Drakenhart is has a ship that can fly, but also can sail like a normal ship. Not all of the flying ships can operate in the water anymore, but hers is a dual ship and it's built that way. And she's just trying to make enough so she can keep her crew living. That is her motivation. And Blackwood, as an attorney, has gotten a hold of her accounting books and noticed the irregularities and realizes she's going to be the best option if he wants to find his dad's missing ship. And so he blackmails her. And as part of the blackmail, he gets placed onto the ship as well as the benefactor who's paying for the mission. And she does let her first mate know the full scope that they're being blackmailed, but everyone else, they're just told that they've taken on this mission to find the ship, which the crew's fine with, even though it means having to go into an area that is called the Mist, if I remember right, where ships can get lost, which is where they think that this missing ship is. You have a mystery starting this book as you're trying to find out what is going on. And then Nelson, as he comes upon the captain's ship and starts meeting the crew, begins to like them, genuinely begins to like them and feel bad that he's blackmailing them. Or he's blackmailed the captain, which means basically everyone else has been blackmailed as well because... It's things have been set up that if they don't return at by a certain time that his the blackmail documents will be made public and so everybody on the ship will be in trouble with the law. So explaining that, I'm sure right now it sounds like a typical fantasy kind of entry into a world. But where Lillian Horn really shines are her characters. And if you've been paying any attention, a lot of my favorite books it's because of the characters. The first time we meet Captain Drakenhart, we see her through the lens of Nelson. And so we get a certain picture of her. And then when we meet her again, it's in her own POV. And then we get to see another side of her, a side that's a little more vulnerable and a little more open-hearted. 
That doesn't mean that she won't make cutthroat decisions because that is in the business that she is in. However, she is not your typical anti-hero either. And her crew is filled with interesting personalities that work well with one another. And you can tell that they are brothers in arms, even if they don't always get along with one another. And I adore them. Further on the book, when things happen, when they go into the mist and tragedy strikes and the crew gets scattered, I wanted the crew to get back together. I didn't want them anyone to be hurt. I wanted them to all make it out alive because it, it's like a found family. Uh, yeah, it, it's like a found family trope, just told in a slightly different form. Something else I really liked about this is the author is from Norway. And so we get a lot of Norwegian myths interlaced into this. I would say that this is like an alternate Earth from the map that was included with the Ark. It, the map kind of looks like Europe, but it's not exactly like the Europe we have now. But there seems to be like similar structures to the landscape and some of the political things going on at the time, like I would say 1800s and 1900s, not perfectly that way. It reminded me a lot of Tracy Townsend's series that begins with the nine where it's like an alternate earth set in America, but things have gone differently, way differently. That's kind of how this feels is it's an alternate earth and we have different minerals that has allowed different technology to happen. And so we have some of the same myths and these myths are true and how they interplay with the rest of the story, especially once the ship goes into the mist, that's really where they start coming out. I don't know a lot about Norwegian mythology or how much has actually been used from Norwegian mythology. I just recognize some terms that were there. It was interesting to see how the mythology in the world also played into it. The creatures that they find in the mist have been heard of before and talked about in stories that some of the characters know and so they're able to be like oh hey what about this oh hey we, we should be aware of this just in case this is one of the creatures we bump into it, it was a lot of fun you have the, like the science fiction world building and then a mythological layer and it just blends together really really nicely and the last thing i want to talk about in my book review is the plot i kind of told you how this book has started that gets you onto the adventure. But further into the plot, I do think that there were things that didn't get fully resolved in this book, and I think should have. But as it's the beginning of a series, I'm wondering if those are gonna be through lines to and have effect for other books. So, I'm, so while I don't feel like they were resolved here in this book, I am curious to see, do they, are they, going further into the next book because it sounds like the crew is going to be dealing more with the creatures that they have met. So I guess to sum up kind of my feelings on the plot, it, I think it's very strong at the beginning and then towards the middle and end it gets a little more murky and things aren't fully explained and in some cases I kind of rationalize that away because oh hey maybe that isn't something that the character would ever actually understand. But in other cases, there were a couple plot conveniences of, with getting everyone in the crew back together and solving the situation that Captain Drakenhart finds herself in. I think that wrapped up way too neatly, unless it's going to come back and bite her in the ass in another book. That's the only thing I could be thinking of because I expected more of a fight to go down or I expected a fight for all the buildup that is given so I think that was probably the only sour note for me in this book I felt that we got to build up for something then we got a very easy resolution to something up if you like alternate earth worlds 
with new technologies and like mythology from other locations, I think you should try this book. I think you would like it. And like, it's a very interesting start. And I look forward to seeing how this story is going to progress and coming back and meeting Nelson and Roseanne more and other stories. Thank you and have a good day.